Hello everyone, my name is Robert and I am one of CA's Community Life Pastors. Welcome to this week's edition of Digital Discipleship. You know, most Christians understand that we have been given the right to be called children of God because of Jesus' finished work at the cross. But there's another identity or title God calls us that's so powerful, yet many easily miss and sometimes are even unaware of. Today, I want to reveal what that is and unpack its implications. But before we get going, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Please allow the Holy Spirit to open hearts and minds as we learn more about you and who you say we are in your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So this title is a kingdom identity that we are called to realize, and it's found in 2 Corinthians 5.20. Let me read the passage for you. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. When you first look at this verse, you may not recognize the fullness of the charge we are given by it. That's okay, because I didn't either until I took the time to understand what an ambassador is. Once I realized the many facets of this position, I believe the Holy Spirit was spot on in using Paul to pen this exact title for all of us who belong to God's kingdom. So let's start by asking the question, what is an ambassador? Though this is not the official dictionary meaning, I think it does a good job of combining various definitions and descriptions that I have found for an ambassador. So an ambassador is a dignitary whose full-time job is to live for a period of time on foreign soil, intentionally building relationships with the people native to that land to influence the territory for his government. A few other facts about an ambassador are, he must be a citizen of the state he comes from. He is appointed by the king or president. He is committed to his nation's interest and speaks only his government's position. He is totally covered by his government and all his needs are met by it. Finally, he must remain in constant contact with his government. Well, there you have it. We have a pretty good description of what an ambassador is. Now let's break it down into components to understand and compare how relevant each of these criteria closely applies to us as we live out our calling to be agents for God's kingdom. First part of the definition I want to cover is the word dignitary. So a dignitary is a person considered to be important because of high rank or office. In other words, an ambassador is the highest ranked representative of a nation. Well, you know, the same is true of us. Whether we realize it or not, we are all dignitaries of our king. Romans 8, 16 to 17 says, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. We are not only God's kids, but heirs of his kingdom. I am not sure if there is a higher rank that we can aspire for. God has truly given us the highest place of honor by calling us his own. Well, next, the ambassador is required to relocate to the foreign land where he is assigned for a period of time. Clearly, this is not a commuter, summer, or part-time job. The ambassador needs to establish residence in the foreign country assigned to him to be effective in carrying out his duties. Once again, the same is true for you and me. Often in scripture, we are called aliens and strangers in this world. Why? Because scripture clearly states that although we are in this world, we are not of this world. So let's look at 1 Peter 2.11. It says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners, to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. It's clear we are to consider ourselves as temporary residents and foreigners, simply passing through without any permanence. The theologian William Barclay explains it this way, An ambassador's life is spent among people 
who usually speak a different language, who have a different tradition, and who follow a different way of life. The Christian is always like that. He lives in the world, he takes part in all the life and work of the world, but he is a citizen of heaven. To that extent, he is a stranger. Man, what a perspective to realize and live out, especially in these times we're in now. God is calling us to live above the fray and noise of this world system. Thirdly, an ambassador's mission is to build relationships with the people in the foreign land to expand his government's interest and influence in the territory. So although he's expected to adapt and be flexible to the difference in culture and tradition of his own, host nation, he is always mindful of his mission to be the influencer and not be the one who is influenced. Likewise, we are directed not to conform to the ways of this world. Paul wrote in Romans 12 saying, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. So we build relationships for the purpose of influencing others towards experiencing the love and forgiveness of our Father. We are to be agents of change, the salt and light of this world, just as Jesus called us when he was here on earth. Fourth. An ambassador must be a citizen of the state he represents to display and embody its culture, beliefs, and values. In other words, he can't come from the place where he is assigned. Otherwise, he will be ineffective because his allegiance will be compromised. Philippians 3.20 clearly reads, But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. So citizenship is not determined where we are right now, but where we are from. Again, citizenship is not determined where we are right now. It is determined where we are from. We are simply here on assignment. Next An ambassador can only be appointed by the president or king. It's a post you can't earn or apply for. It's the sole discretion of the head of state to choose whomever he wants to appoint according to his pleasure. As Christ's ambassadors, we too were chosen and appointed by our king. Let's take a look at John 15, 16. Let me read that for you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for in my name. There is our election and mandate. It speaks of not only putting the fruit of the Spirit on display through our lives, but also of productivity. God himself chose us to embody life in the kingdom, to make it inviting for others to come and join. Sixth, the, the, an ambassador is committed solely to his nation's interest and speaks only his government's position, never his own. Well, the same is true for Christ's ambassadors. We have been given a ministry of reconciliation to proclaim to a lost world the message of grace. Our original message, our original passage in 2 Corinthians 5.20 reminds us that God himself is constantly making this appeal His appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God, is what the passage says. It's an appeal from a loving father to wandering and estranged children to come home where love is waiting for them. What a privilege to spread that good news. Next, an ambassador is totally covered by their government and all their needs are met by it. It means their food, home, transportation, safety, and all other amenities necessary to function are covered by their government. How they live and the embassies they occupy are reflections of the wealth and strength of the government that backs them up. In the same way, we as ambassadors for Christ are covered and backed by God's promise found in Philippians 4.19, which says, My God will supply 
every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to any nation's limited resources, but according to an inexhaustible wealth of the one who owns the universe. Finally, ambassadors must remain in constant contact with their government for directives and guidance. It's a fast-changing world, so the first thing ambassadors do every day is get the daily briefing issued by their State Department to stay connected. Equally, the same is true for you and me. Our daily briefing with our King is so essential, without it, our days can be aimless. Meeting with our King not only directs us, but also empowers us to carry our mission as Kingdom Ambassadors. One of the things I've been doing lately and have encouraged my life groups every time they meet is to take communion. I think taking the sacraments often allows us to, number one, be reminded of who we are because of what Christ has done for us. It's so easy to forget our true identity and operate on our own, especially in these times. Number two, it opens a channel for God's healing and wholeness to flow in our lives. How many of us are in need of that right now? Third and last, it allows, to, it allows us to see more of Jesus. Remember the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus? How they walked with Jesus the whole way, talking to him, yet not realizing who he was? Finally, when they broke bread together, their eyes were open. Let me read the passage found in Luke 24, starting in verse 30. This is, how they, this is how it happened. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. And then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were open and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. How many of us need a fresh revelation of Jesus? As kingdom ambassadors, we need to be constantly connected constantly connected to the source of our life and strength. Church, being an ambassador for Christ is the fulfillment of an incredibly important kingdom perspective we all must have. To follow Christ means to give up the kingdom of self and the world and instead represent a kingdom that will never, never end. It means our home is in heaven, not earth. Our responsibility is to be actively influencing and telling others about the good news that they too can join the kingdom of God as well. Let's pray. Father, help us to step into the identity you have called us to live out in your kingdom. Allow us to represent you well so we can be both trophies and messengers of your grace. Keep our eyes and hearts focused on you, especially in these uncertain times. May all that we say and do influence others to experience your love as we point them to your finished work at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks everyone. I hope you were blessed. I'll see you guys soon.